Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm gonna to do a quick example here on somewhat the probability kind of number spacing, uh, number universes here around a decision tree. I made a much longer video with a lot more descriptions. I think it's a little convoluted for many of you. Um, I'm gonna put the link above and below, so if you watch this one, I'm gonna to try to make this super crystal clear and simple and easy to understand. And then if you wanna dive into that video, you can get a little bit deeper grasp of what I'm trying to explain here. So um, to start off with here, what I'm trying to show you um, is that there are going to be, I'm gonna call it this the number universe. So number universe, um, more specifically, we'll just call it the number space. And what I'm just trying to say here, a decision tree um, is only valid in a specific range slash domain. Now, I don't know what the technical terms are for this, but we're gonna talk about one, we're gonna talk about density. So in simple terms here, um, a lack of data density here uh, results in um, bad estimates because what's going to happen is we're not going to have um, enough data to get a reliable estimate here. And if you remember the way you calculate uh, the leaf at an end of a tree, it's just an average of data sets. Imagine having like five data points. An average of five data points is not going to be a very good estimator of that. Um, I'm going to debunk to a little bit. I don't like when people say, oh, 30 data points or 100 data points is good enough. Um, for practical applications where money's on the line and important decisions are being made, maybe it's health decisions, financial decisions, uh, 30, 100 is not good enough. And I'll talk a little bit about my rule of thumb just for the banking side. You're going to have to kind of figure out your own as we go. And then the second idea here is going to be that domain and range. And I'm just talking about these in the sense of, um, I'm going to say univariate here, but it, it applies to any uh, any sort of model here where you're going to have something you're predicting and you're going to have inputs in here. So it could be multivariate, but we're going to do univariate because dimensionality kind of makes this kind of crazy and explodes. Okay, so let's just start with an example here. As we mentioned, LTV is going to be loan um, to value, so vehicle valuation. Um, as an example here, if you had a loan for 10,000 and the vehicle's valuation is at 10,000, you have an LTV of one. Uh, this is a very safe loan for the most part because what's gonna happen is if you default on that loan, um, so you make a few payments, you default. If the vehicle is still valued at 10,000, they can go and auction that, get their $10,000 back, be made whole. Um, anything less than one is going to be very safe. So let's say, you know, you took a loan for $5,000 on that $10,000 vehicle. So the value is 10,000. Maybe you have 5,000 in cash you put down as a down payment. Um, this is going to be 0 0.50. Uh, now in finance terms, I'm actually going to just say this is an LTV of 50 because we just make them whole numbers, it's 50%. Um, there also could be examples where it's very, very risky and very, very risky ones is gonna be, you know, greater than or equal to, maybe it's just greater than, uh, greater than one. And what this means is, let's say you have some really junker used vehicle, it's worth $200. Um, the fees, the transaction, the titling, I don't know, there's a bunch of things that go into this, paying the salesperson, it's not enough value to sell a car that has a valuation of 200 bucks, right? Maybe it's a 20 year old car, it's a beater with 300,000 miles, but somebody's gonna need that car, right? They just can't afford to pay for a 10, $20,000 car. And so someone might take a loan and sell this car for, I don't know, $800 because the dealer's gotta make some sort of money on it. They've gotta cover their costs and fees associated with moving this vehicle. Um, the actual valuation of the vehicle is only $200. Uh, this is 400%, or we're just going to say this is a 400 LTV in industry terms here. Um, but this is really risky here. So let me do a decision tree, and I'll explain how this kind of works, and we'll talk a little bit about why the tree fails in certain situations. We have this LTV, we're going to say, I don't know, it's less than, let's say, 68. And then we have LTV again. Now, again, we are going to be predicting... PD, which is probability of default. Um, this is just, you know, default. So if a customer defaults on a loan, it equals one. If, you know, never defaults, that's going to be equal to zero. And we're just trying to predict the probability of someone's going to default given their risk, which risk is going to be kind of judges LTV here. So we're going to say LTV is going to be less than, I don't know, say 48. And then we're going to have a split over here. So LTV is greater than 68. Um, but also LTV is, you know, let's say, let's say less than 77. 
And so we're gonna have leaves here. So someone with a really low LTV less than 48 in this case, probably gonna have about a 5% probability of default. So out of all the customers that meet this criteria, 5% of them are going to default, 95% are gonna be good. We should make these sorts of loans. Um, if it's gonna be between 48, so greater than 48, um, but less than 68, uh, let's say it has like a 12% probability of default. And then if we go to the right side of the tree here, greater than 68, um, but less than 77, let's say this is a 38% chance of default. And then finally, anything greater than 77, it's gonna have like an 80% chance of default here. Now, this tree looks great and it makes a lot of logical sense as we've talked about here, right? If it's you know low LTV, low defaults, dealers are going to recover their information, their value anyway, so it's going to be profitable. Um, but more specifically, customers that already, you know, don't need a lot of loan, they're not going to be that very risky. Um, customers that are riskier are going to need, you know, more loan, LTV is going to be higher here, they might not pay this sort of loan back. Now, the better way to view this, I think, is going to be in the probability kind of space here that I like to draw out. So if we have PD on this axis, we have zero, we have one, um, we have LTV. Uh, in our data set here, we only went up to one for LTV. Um, we have our first root split is going to be 68. So important max LTV in data equals uh, one. Uh, let's say our min LTV in data Let's say it was like, I don't know, 23. Like you're not gonna get really low ones because no one's gonna say, oh, I'm gonna take out a loan for 50 bucks or like $100 or $1,000. A lot of times if you have a massive loan uh, and your LTV is very small, um, they're not gonna take the loan. They're just gonna find a way to like, save a few more months and pay that off. But this will become important here in a second. And let's just draw this tree out here um, now onto this kind of different view that we've talked about before. So LTV is 68, it's probably gonna be somewhere around here. Uh, LTV, let's go to the right side here. LTV is gonna be less than 77, so this is 68. 77 is probably gonna be right about here. And then we go to the left side here, let's see, LTV of 48 is the other split. Okay, and let's say this is leaf one, two, three, Four. These coincide to leaf one, two, three, and four. Um, so this just gives you a different view and a different perspective uh, of the tree itself here. So this model looks great. It looks like it works. It's amazing. It works for the business here. Now this model only works for a prime business here. And what I mean by this is someone who consistently makes loans uh, with an LTV of less than one. Anything above this, this model is invalid. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys why here in a second. Um, so this first leaf has a prediction of 5% right here. So what this means when you read the trees, an LTV less than 68 goes into this one, um, this branch here, and a LTV less than 48 is going to be 5%. So any LTV less than 48 is gonna get a 5%. We got that prediction for that leaf because we averaged everybody that met those conditions in our development data set and they had a 5%, so uh, training data set in machine learning terms here, but stats and stuff, development data set. Uh, the average of the people in this group, so inside this group here, if we averaged all these people, the average was 5%. So we ended up with a 5% prediction here. Now the next group is gonna have, you know, let's say a 12% right here. And then 38% was right like here. I know my, my scaling's not great, guys, I'm sorry. but And then we'll put up here, this is the 80% LTV. Now what I'm telling you here is this model does great in the ranges it was built on. Um, but often I hear people say, Dimitri, the, mod, the, the decision tree just broke because it was overfitted. No, it's not overfitted. It's because you don't have the proper uh, numerical space, or in this case, probability space to cover all possible scenarios. This model is developed for someone, some business that's doing prime, so LTV less than one. The question now is if we had that 400 LTV that was way out here, right? This model can predict values outside of its range. It's not gonna be a good prediction, but it's what's gonna say is it's gonna say, okay, everybody that's greater than, so this leaf here, this 80%, any LTV greater than 77 is gonna get the same prediction value of 80%. We know that's going to be wrong just from a business insight, right? An LTV of one, as I mentioned before, is still pretty safe. 
Uh, it's a safe operating business. Now, if a business is trying to expand its markets and everything, this is where you need to be critical on your model development, your data sets, your sampling and everything. Because as you can see here, right, an LTV of 400 is probably gonna be like a 99% probability of default. You're gonna be mispricing this by saying it's, it's 80, when realistically the prediction should be here. But because you're missing data here, so you're missing data, um, you cannot predict this. So that is the domain piece here, right? So range is gonna be your Y variable, your predictive variable PD. We have zeros, we have ones. Now it's somewhat of a range issue because we don't really have any range values for these customers, um, but it's more specifically your domain, your X values, your independent variables here, um, because the model's never seen uh, any sort of values that go above and beyond. And the way a decision tree works, as I mentioned, is it just applies this logic greater than to everything. So it's going to fail on all of these. Now where the model is not going to fail is LTV can only be down to zero. So understanding your number space here, uh, LTV range, it's capped at zero, right? If you're not, if you have zero, you're not going to make um, a loan. Now more specifically, I should do a parentheses um, because it doesn't really include zero. If you had zero, you wouldn't have a, there's no loan. So it has to be greater than zero. Um, but it can't be less than zero and it can't be zero. And this range is going to go up, we can say to infinity, um, but business strategy is going to dictate this. So in this prime business here, you could say it's from zero to one, but you would need to realize you can never go outside of that range or you can't go very far, right? The model is going to keep predicting, but it's not going to be very good estimates here. Now, the other issue I'm going to talk a little bit about is we got these 5%, this 12% here, this 38%, remember by averaging all the data points in the different areas. So remember there's 5% were bad and 95% down here were good. Um, out of the total, this gives me a 5% bad rate. And then it gives you the 12, 38, and 80, depending on which bucket you're in, which leaf you're in here. Now, density when we talk about this is you're just not gonna have enough data points to make an estimate here. So if you look at this space, right, this one looks huge. Uh, this goes from zero to 48 for the LTV, which is the largest leaf. But as I mentioned, you're probably never going to see many loans that are less than, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 ish. I'm just, I'm just ballparking with my gut here, um, given some business experience here. Now I work in deep subprime, so I'm working up here. I don't work down here in the safe spot, so I don't know this a lot. Someone can put some comments below. Um, but you're not gonna see a lot of data in this area here. So you would never want to split these leaves um, perhaps further if you don't have enough data, right? So in the, in the loan space here, when we do predictions, I typically make my employees have, uh, number of bads is gonna be 200. I like to have in my leaves um, 500 observations as a minimum. Now we need to make these larger and more complex. Uh, again, this model will work great if we don't plan on changing our business strategy and plan, but this is kind of the, the warning here, right? This is the warning. This is the this is what we call risk management, right? This is um, this is where understanding your models very well and putting disclaimers in your documentation is critical because you can see the model is not going to work in very specific situations here, right? Uh, it failed on larger ones in this case because of our domain issue with data, right? We might we didn't have enough data. Maybe we've never worked in that market or that industry. Um, the model is not going to work there, even if it works great and it's intended use of this main kind of part here. Um, data density is something else I consistently worry a lot about. I see a lot of people do development out of time data <clears throat> or even out of sample, which is another bad practice I see a lot in the finance space specifically. Um, but if you just don't have enough observations, when you go to take the average here to do this estimate, the estimate's gonna be noisy and it's not gonna be very consistent. It's not going to be very accurate. Um, it might work great in your development and you're out of time, as I mentioned, or in machine learning terms, uh, your training and your testing. Um, but what's gonna happen is since you don't have enough data points to accurately get a stable um, prediction of that mean, that leaf value, that prediction here of say 5%, um, you're just gonna get really, really bad estimates because the tree's not designed to do that. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you want a little bit more detail and discussion around number spaces and kind of ways to view them or how I at least view them, um, check out the video linked above or below. Uh, thanks for watching. If you found it helpful, do like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.